Well, those are the news headlines. Uh, in a report released today, the organisation Human Rights Watch says that Hamas led other Palestinian armed groups in committing hundreds of war crimes and crimes against humanity in the October the 7th attack on Israel that set off the Gaza war. Hamas has reacted with fury to what is one of the most in-depth international studies on the matter, and Hamas demands that Human Rights Watch withdraw the report and, in its words, apologise. Well, I'm now joined on the line by ABC News correspondent uh, Jordana Miller in Jerusalem. Uh, Jordana, then, good to have you with us. Uh, can you give us a bit more detail about, you know, what's actually in this report and how it's being received in Israel, what kind of response there's been? Well, as you said, the Human Rights uh, Watch report says that Hamas uh, led uh, four other groups of militants uh, in the attack on October 7th and that they committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. And those crimes include killing, kidnapping, torturing, uh, sexual violence, uh, using uh, people as human shields, uh, and this is an important report because, remember, Hamas initially denied that they intentionally uh, were going to carry out such a wide-scale attack, saying, well, all of these people kind of joined in and they, there were civilians that came over from the areas that they blew, that they breached the border. And Human Rights Watch says, no, they found that most of the people who took part in the attack were uh, members of militant groups, and that Hamas had uh, planned, they had intentionality to carry out a massive wide-scale attack against civilian targets. And that's also a key part of this report. You know, Human Rights Watch says Hamas went out and uh, attacked 26 different locations um, and killed and kidnapped uh, Israelis and other nationals, um, and that this was meticulously planned uh, and intentional. Um, and even though their own researchers who came here to Israel and also talked to eyewitnesses and experts, uh, though they didn't go in depth on the issue of sexual violence, uh, the Human Rights Watch report does defer to the conclusions of the UN report, which said that there was reasonable grounds to assume that Hamas carried out uh, attacks of sexual uh, and gender-based violence, including rape uh, and mutilation. Uh, what's been the response in Israel on this? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, Human Rights Watch is usually putting out very negative and critical reports on Israel, um, which are often embraced by the civil rights groups here, but, uh, you know, slammed by the government. And, the government has even at times uh, not allowed Human Rights Watch uh, their uh, key uh, leaders into Israel. But the report is being uh, welcomed um, because, you know, it is seen as, uh, you know, another, you know, another uh, in-depth report that documents Hamas's crimes on October 7th. And Sadly, we know that just nine months after this ghastly attack and after Hamas actually documented so much of it, their own members uh, with video and pictures, there is a lot of denial about what happened on October 7th. It wasn't that bad. The Israelis made up the reports of, you know, uh, sh you know, burning people, killing children, raping women. You know, it's all kind of lies. They just took some soldiers. Right. So it is important that an organization, a global human rights organization like Human Rights Watch, puts out this report. Uh, just as you say, nine and a half months on, where are we now on negotiations uh, for an exchange of hostages uh, for prisoners, nearly nine and a half months on? There's still quite a lot of division just within the Israeli government on how to handle any possible uh, truce. And uh, Netanyahu off to the US next week. Can you give us an idea of, of where all that is? That's right. I mean, there has long, there have long been divisions inside the Israeli government, inside the war cabinet proceedings about, you know, whether to stop the fighting and make painful concessions to get out the hostages or continue the fighting. What's different in the last few weeks is that those fights have now really gone into the public arena. 
And we have, you know, former uh, war cabinet ministers like General Benny Gantz and the defense minister, Yoav Gallant, who's still leading this war, saying this is the moment. We've made a lot of uh, achievements on the battlefield. It's time to get out uh, those hostages. Remember, there's 116, eight of them American. Over 40 we know are dead, but that could leave still dozens alive. That camp versus Netanyahu, who appears uh, lately, at least in his public remarks, to be more concerned with putting more pressure on Hamas, getting more uh, wins on the battlefield, so to speak, um, and thinking that he can break Hamas or get them to even make more concessions when all parties say Hamas now is showing flexibility. And there's been a lot of criticism from the families of the hostages who are saying, how can you travel to Washington in the middle of a war, in the middle of a moment when negotiations are ongoing? I mean, there's a, a, a first unconfirmed report just a short while ago that Israeli uh, negotiators have landed in Cairo. So the families of the hostages are saying, what are you doing going to Washington? What could possibly be more important than this deal to get out Israeli civilians who, frankly, the state of Israel so desperately failed on October 7th? So Netanyahu coming under a lot of criticism.